Hello guys! Welcome to our yet another episode of our lecture series. In today's episode, we are going to talk about paraphilia disorders. In this presentation, we are going to introduce, define, know the conditions etiology, manifestations, treatment therapies, and ethical legal considerations. Without further ado, let's get into it. Many of the estimates on the prevalence of paraphilic disorders came from the number of people involved with the criminal justice system due to pedophilia. Most individuals with this sexual deviation are men, 3% to 5% of the male population, with just 1% to 6% of those individuals being women, except for masochism, which is 20 times more common in women than in men. Paraphilias are almost exclusively diagnosed in men. Many people who suffer from one paraphilia have more than one. For example, about one-third of pedophiles also have another paraphilia. More than half engage in three or four such kinds of behaviors rather than just one. Most people who develop paraphilia begin having fantasies about it before they are 13 years old. As defined, Paraphilia is any emotional disorder characterized by sexually arousing fantasies, urges, or behaviors that are recurrent, intense, occurs over a period of at least six months, and cause significant distress or interfere with their sufferer's work, social function, or other important areas of functioning. This is as opposed to sexual variants, which are sexual behaviors that are not typical but are not a part of any illness. The word paraphilia was derived from Greek word para, which means around or beside, and philia, which means love. A total of eight paraphilias are listed in DSM-5 and includes pedophilia, exhibitionism, voyeurism, sexual sadism, sexual masochism, fruturism, fetishism, and transvestic fetishisms. There are many factors that are being considered in the causation of this condition, some of which are the common ones are first, genetic, second, neurobiological, which it believes androgen plays a significant role in regulation of sexual desire for men, then third, psychodynamic perspective, where it believes that there is a defense to protect ego from suppressed fears and memories, then lastly, psychological factors where it believes that inadequate sexual skills or reinforcement by parents or relatives, physical or sexual abuse, and alcohol is one of the factors to be considered. The DSM-5 adds a distinction between paraphilias and paraphilic disorders, stating that paraphilias do not require or justify psychiatric treatment in themselves, and defining paraphilic disorders as a paraphilia that is currently causing distress or impairment to the individual or a paraphilia whose satisfaction has entailed personal harm or risk of harm to others. As mentioned earlier, there are types of paraphilia, and to further elaborate, here they are. First, pedophilia. Pedophilia is any sexual activity with a prepubescent child where the offender or patient is at least 16 years of age and the victim is at least 5 years younger. Second, exhibitionism. Exhibitionism is the exposure of an individual's genitalia to unsuspecting strangers for sexual satisfaction. Third, voyeurism. Voyeurism is the viewing of an unsuspecting person engaging in disrobing or sexual activity. Fourth, sexual sadism. Sexual sadism is when a sexual arousal is gained from inflicting mental or physical suffering on a non-consenting person. Fifth, sexual masochism. Sexual masochism is the derivation of sexual arousal from being the recipient of physical or mental abuse or, in other instances, humiliation. Sixth, fracturism. Fracturism is the touching of or rubbing against a non-consenting person. Seventh, fetishms. Fetishms is the use of non-living objects, most commonly shoes and undergarments, for sexual pleasure. Eighth, 
transvestic fetishms. Transvestic fetishms is the derivation of sexual arousal from cross-dressing or dressing in clothes of the opposite sex. Signs and symptoms of this condition can be evident and observed in the following forms. First, experiences of intense sexual fantasies and urges. Second, getting sexual gratification from watching a person naked with or without the consent. And lastly, proven if the behavior, fantasies, and intense sexual urges causes distress or hindrance to social and occupational areas of normal functioning. As to the treatment and medical management of the condition, here are the most common ones. First, pharmacologic therapy. Pharmacologic interventions may be used to suppress sexual behavior. These treatments may offer genuine help to a variety of patients with paraphilic disorders. However, numerous adverse effects have been reported. Additionally, Ethical, medical, and legal questions have been raised regarding issues of informed consent, especially in hospital and prison settings. Medications that may be considered in the treatment of paraphilic disorders may include antidepressants, long-acting gonadotropin-releasing hormones, antiandrogens, phenothiazines, and mood stabilizers. Second, group therapy. Group therapy in this setting is designed to help paraphilic individuals break through the denial they so commonly exhibit by surrounding them with other patients who share the same condition. And lastly, Individual Expressive Supportive Psychotherapy. Individual Expressive Supportive Therapy requires a psychologically minded patient who is willing to focus on the paraphilia. The therapist should not set unrealistically high goals but must break through the denial. There are endless legal, ethical, and historical debates discussing sexual deviance. Inherent in these controversies are the ethical issues of autonomy, utilitarian issues, and police power. Autonomy pertains to the right of the person to decide their destiny. For instance, a client may opt to do whatever sexual interest they have. Second, utilitarian issues pertains to that of which that serves the greater good, for instance, to prevent a moral decline. Then lastly, police power. It pertains to the right of the state to protect its citizen, for instance, to protect individuals from being either direct or indirect victims of the sexual activities of others. And that's it for paraphilia disorder. Thank you guys and see you in the next one.